The key to becoming a successful fly fisherman is having a fly the fish will take, which means having the right pattern and being able to present it to the right spot. Someone can give you the right fly, however, only you can present it. First, you must be able to cast, which means understanding the principles of how fly casting works, the principle of straight line energy transfer, and the principle of loop control. Only by mastering the application of both can you perform the basic fly presentation cast. The secret to casting is educating your wrist. Fly fishing instructor and author, Doug Swisher, will show you how. Hi, I'm Doug Swisher, and I'm gonna show you my system of fly casting. My system is quite different. I'll show you a method that'll give you the versatility you need to fish any type of water. The old fashioned tournament style of casting simply doesn't work for most fishing situations. I'll show you the all important visual aspect of casting, which will not only help you learn quicker, but will also give you the ability to judge your own progress. I'll emphasize a straight line flow of energy which is controlled by what I call the microsecond wrist. Developing a smooth, controlled microsecond wrist is the key to becoming a great fly caster. I'll demonstrate many dramatic exercises that will show you exactly how to educate your wrist. I'll also tell you why you need to learn the various techniques and show you the mechanics behind each one. I'll teach you the importance of straight line rod tip travel, which forces the energy of the cast to transfer straight to the target. I'll show you what the loop is and how to control it. I'll teach you the movements necessary to perform the basic casting stroke. And I'll show you how to add shooting line and the control system to the all important presentation cast. The straight line cast, and the slack line cast. Your ability to perform these techniques will allow you to catch more fish. In short, you'll find my system an easy to learn, common sense approach to fly casting. Before we get into the basics, let's take a look at the visual aspect of the sport. I feel strongly that you can't improve your technique or make corrections if you can't see and recognize your mistakes. This means you must learn to watch the line both the front cast and the back cast, especially the back cast. It's the one you're not in the habit of watching, but it's the one you should be watching. It's fact. If you don't make a good back cast, it's almost impossible to make a good front cast. So get into the habit of watching every back cast when you're practicing. An aid in learning to watch your line is to use a bright colored fly line, both on the practice field and for actual fishing. Don't worry about scaring the fish. Bad casting scares fish, not bright fly lines. Being able to see your line instills a mental confidence factor that is extremely important to becoming an accomplished angler. For the casting field demonstrations in this tape, I'll not only use a bright colored fly line, but one that's a little oversized, again, so you can see it better. I've also taken a nice graphite two rod and painted it white for better visibility. For the very best visual demonstration of all, I'll use the yarn rod, which is less than three feet long and utilizes a super bright yarn for the line. The beauty of the yarn rod is that it acts exactly the way a real fly line does, only in slow motion. It can be used anytime, right in the comfort of your own home. At this point, I'd like to encourage you to practice. I can show you what to do, but I can't practice for you. It's like any other sport, there are no shortcuts. Every hour on the practice field pays big dividends. Now let's see why fly casting works. In other types of casting, the lure has enough weight so it can easily pull the line behind it. To send the lure on its way, you merely swing the rod back then snap it forward. The quick flip of the wrist transmits energy through the rod, sending the lure out like a bullet, pulling the line behind it. In fly casting, the rolls are reversed. You actually cast the line, and the fly is pulled along behind.
it would be impossible to cast the nearly weightless flies you'll be using without the weight of the fly line. So you must learn to control the movement of the fly line by rolling it out, both forward and backward. The control of this motion is based on the principle of straight line movement. My straight line approach concentrates all of the energy of the cast in one direction, straight and efficiently to the target. The most important factor in controlling the straight line flow of energy is the rod tip. The rod tip should travel straight to the target, not in an arcing path. Arcing movement dissipates power in too many directions. The straighter the movement of the rod tip, the more the energy flows directly to the target. Remember, the rod tip controls all, so learn to drive it as straight as possible. The fly line and the fly will follow. The second important factor is that the front and back cast should be in a straight line. It is very difficult to throw an efficient straight front cast if the back cast is out of line with the front cast. Imagine a wire drawn tight between two points. The front and back cast must be right on the wire. Another very important factor in fly casting is the line should be straight in one direction before you apply the power in the other direction. To demonstrate this principle, I've laid out a crooked line here on the grass, and I'm going to show you how difficult it is to cast that crooked line. If I apply the power to that line, it doesn't want to go anywhere. But if I lay that line out nice and straight, with just very little snap of the wrist, it's on its way. So what you want to remember is, if you want to make a good front cast, be sure that back cast gets out there nice and straight, and it makes it a real easy job to make a nice straight front cast. Another important basic in fly casting is that the arm contributes to the straight line movement of the rod tip. In the old fashioned style of casting, where you pinned your arm to your side, it was almost impossible to make the rod tip go in a straight line. It went in a big old semicircle, a big old arc. By freeing the arm, it's much easier to make the rod tip drive in a nice straight line. Good casting is not continuous arcing movements. Instead, it's straight line, stop and go movements. Straight back, straight ahead. The primary physical skill of a good caster is a smooth, controlled, microsecond wrist. I think you can see that the wrist is definitely the power of the cast. The key is learning to snap the wrist in a straight line, so you drive the rod dip in a straight line right to the target. And the quicker you snap the wrist, the tighter the loop. If you have a slow wrist, the rod tip drops out of a straight line, the loop is too wide. Keep it fast, and it also will load the rod and add a lot more impetus to your cast. Believe me, the key to good casting is to develop what I call the microsecond wrist. The quicker you snap your wrist, the more the rod will bend. You must load the rod in order to cast well. The more the rod loads, the greater the amount of energy that is transferred to the target. I want you to think straight line, especially when it comes to your wrist. Train it to snap out straight to the target and not down towards your feet. And also, train it to snap quickly and smoothly. As you can see from the yarn rod demonstrations, a straight line movement concentrates all the power in one direction and most efficiently forces the line toward the target. Now, let's talk about the second principle of fly casting, the loop. In fly casting, the path created by the fly line as it rolls out from the rod tip is called the loop. This configuration looks somewhat like a candy cane or the letter J lying on its side, tilted one way during the front cast and then the other way during the back cast. The ability to regulate the loop is the cornerstone to controlling the presentation casts we will learn later. Without a good foundation of loop control, 
you'll never become more than an average caster. Now let's take a look at the three characteristics of the loop, size, shape, and direction, and I'll demonstrate what they look like. By size, I mean the distance between the top and bottom of the candy cane. This is a tight loop. This is a wide loop. By shape, I mean the loop can have three basic configurations. This is a perfect loop where the top and bottom are parallel and the front is rounded. This is an open loop where the top angles up and away from the bottom. This is a very air resistant loop that beginners throw. The closed loop is the one where the top of the candy cane angles down towards the bottom and sometimes drops below the bottom. This is a loop that causes the so-called wind knots. By direction, I mean where you aim your loops, and this applies to both front and back cast. You can aim your front cast high, you can aim it low, you can aim it to the left, you can aim it to the right. Also in the back cast, you can aim it high, low, and off to either side. You have the choice of aiming front and back cast anywhere you want to. You should be able to control the size, shape, and direction of your loop. Now I'll show you exactly how to control each of those characteristics. Let's start with loop size. This is a nice tight loop. This is a wide loop, and I'm sure this is the one you've all mastered, right? Well, to control the loop size, you've got to control the travel of the rod tip. The straighter it travels, the tighter the loop. The more it travels in an arc, the wider the loop. So what you want to practice Make that rod tube travel a nice straight line to get a tight, efficient loop. That's the one you want to work on. Now let's talk about loop shape. The angle between the front cast and the back cast controls the shape of the loop. The perfect loop will not tangle and is more energy efficient. The top and bottom are parallel and the front is rounded. You get the perfect loop when you line your front and back cast up in a straight line. You can aim your loop anywhere you want. You can tilt it up. Or tilt it down. You can angle it to the right. or you can angle it to the left. Just remember to keep your front cast and back cast in a straight line. Obviously, this is the type of loop you want to throw consistently. So concentrate on a straight line flow of energy. This is an open loop. Notice how the top of the candy cane angles up. Open loops are formed when the front cast and back cast are separated by more than 180 degrees. Beginners throw this loop. It is very wind resistant and the energy is dissipated in too many directions. The closed loop is a loop where the top of the candy cane angles down. It is formed when the front cast and back cast are separated by less than 180 degrees. It is called a tailing or tangling loop and causes wind knots. A very simple but important rule evolves from the study of loop direction. If you understand this mechanical principle, you can solve many of your casting problems. Here's the rule. Whatever happens to the tip of your line on the back cast is reversed when you make the front cast. Let me give you a demonstration of what I'm talking about. If I throw my back cast too low with the tip of the line right here on the ground, when I come forward, Notice how the tip of the line jumped high as it went by my head. It went way up high, gave me a wide loop. If I throw the loop high to the rear and come through, the tip of the line comes through low. It reverses itself. Let's take it in a different plane. When I face you head on, if I throw my back cast too far to this side, when I come forward to the target, look how the tip of the line jumped over here. If I make my back cast over here too far, I come forward, the tip of the line crossed over and went to the other side. 
So, what you should do is learn to line your loops up in a nice straight line, and you will not have the crossover problem, and you won't tangle. Keep your loops in a straight line. The key to loop control is learning how to control the rod tip. You must learn how to control its movement and speed. You must make it move quickly and in a straight line. This is accomplished by developing the microsecond wrist and thinking in terms of straight line energy flow. To become a top-notch flycaster, and I can't emphasize this enough, you must know what the loop is and understand the importance of controlling its three basic characteristics, size, shape, and direction. This is absolutely vital if you're to have a solid foundation for the basic casting stroke and all of the presentation cast you'll be learning. Doug Swisher will be casting right-handed in this tape. Left-handed casters should adapt by learning the concepts and then apply the techniques to their situation. Now that you know what to look for and some of the terminology of fly casting, let's look at the basic casting stroke. The basic stroke is the method by which we control a loop. Up to this point, we've concentrated mainly on training the mind to understand the straight line concept and loop control. In other words, the fundamental principles behind fly casting. Well, now Doug will show you how to physically train your arm and more importantly, the wrist to control the cast. Okay, now before I show you the actual basic casting stroke, we have to have a method of holding the rod, the grip, and a way to stand. So first of all, let me cover the grip that I think you ought to use. <clears throat> the one that I prefer is thumb on top of the cork on the opposite side from the reel. One on one side, one on the other. And it's very much like picking up a satchel or a suitcase. It'd be a loose, relaxed grip. That's half the secret of casting, is staying loose and relaxed. The reason that grip is so good, we're trying to keep our rod tip high and not to drop out of a straight line. And by having the thumb up there, it inhibits that rod tip from dropping. If you let your thumb slip on the side like this, then the rod will get away from you. So, thumb on top of the cork, loose, relaxed, and with this kind of a grip, you also get a lot more power when you apply that wrist. Now let me show you the stance. For fishing, I stand square to my target. If I've got an old brown out here feeding, I stand square to him so I can take him head on. But for practice, I stand a little bit sideways, nice comfortable stance, even weight on each foot, but I stand sideways so I can turn my head and watch that bright colored fly line on every back cast. Obviously, I can't improve it unless I'm looking at it. By standing sideways, you're more comfortable, easier to turn your head. Now, we've got our grip, we've got our stance. Let's get into the basic casting stroke, the physical ability you need to control your loop. Here's the way I do it in slow motion. I'm just gonna use half a rod with no line to show you the motion of the basic casting stroke. Our grip is with the thumb on top of the cork. We'll extend the arm out in front of the shoulder. We'll let the rod angle up at about 45 degrees. To start the stroke to make the back cast, all we do is slowly pull the rod parallel to the ground. And when, in, when the rod gets up near our ear area, we snap it quickly. That completes the back cast. To make the front cast, we just reverse it. We come back down the track with a slow, smooth arm movement. We flick the wrist back to the starting spot, and that's your complete back cast and forecast. Let me do it in a continuous motion so you see what it looks like. It's arm, snap, arm, snap, or pull, snap, push, snap. Work your rod through about 90 degrees when you're doing that, and you should throw a nice, efficient loop. That is the basic casting stroke. I've shown you the arm wrist movements. Now let me show you the functions of the arm and the wrist. The arm sets up the cast. It pulls the line straight, gets everything lined up, and the wrist sends the cast on its way. Definitely the power of the cast. The arm sets it up, the wrist is the power. Arm, wrist, 
arm, wrist. Let's string up the rod and do some casting. Practice the basic stroke until it becomes automatic before you advance to the next section. I'd like to talk to you for just a minute about the role the arm plays in the basic casting stroke. When I first showed you the basic stroke, you noticed I used quite a bit of arm. I started with the wrist cocked out here, I pulled the arm, and I said flick the wrist when it gets up by your ear. Well, that's a pretty long arm movement. In reality, when you're using a very short line, you don't need much arm. It's almost all in the wrist. But as you put more and more line in the air, you've got to use more and more arm movement. In fact, for a very long line, that arm really has to move quite a ways. So the amount of arm you use in your basic stroke is proportional to the amount of line that you have in the air. For a very short line, hardly any arm at all. For a long line, you move that arm a little further. I've shown you the, the movements of the basic casting stroke. Now I'm going to show it to you in full color. Remember, arm, wrist, arm, wrist, arm, wrist. Hold the rod loose and relaxed. Don't reach up high. Don't stay down too low. Get a nice, comfortable track. Drive the rod tip in a straight line. It's very easy to do. The basic casting stroke. I've shown you how your arm and wrist should work. So you should have a good visual image of what casting is all about. You've watched me demonstrate loop control and the basic casting stroke. So now it's time for you to go out and do some casting. Before you can actually start educating your wrist, you must have a place to practice and some equipment to work with. Your yard's an ideal place to practice. It's the closest and the handiest. Second choice would be a park or a schoolyard. A pond is fine, but practicing on grass is the best. For targets, use hula hoops or frisbees. Having a highly visual object to aim at will help your accuracy. For indoor work, make your own yarn rod. Pick up a 12-foot piece of brightly colored gift wrap yarn, which you can find at most variety stores, and string it through the tip section of a fly or spin rod. Of course, you're going to need a rod and reel. For a rod, I'd recommend an 8 to a 9-foot graphite rod. That'll hand a 5 or 6 weight line. That's an excellent all-round combination. For a reel, just a simple manual reel will do just fine. For a line, I like a weight forward floater especially in high-vis color. This helps me when I'm practicing and when I'm fishing. You want to have at least six to nine feet of leader. And for a practice fly, I usually just tie on a little piece of bright colored yarn so I can see it. If you buy a premium fly line, the box contains a booklet showing you how to put it all together. It shows you how to attach the backing to the reel, the line to the backing, the leader to the line, and the fly to the leader. OK, now I've got you out here in the casting field. I want to get you started. Before we use the full length rod with the line strung up, I want to run you through the basic stroke by using just half a rod. We're just going to simulate the motion of the basic stroke. Here's what I want you to do. Get your grip, thumb on top of the cork, opposite the reel. Keep it a loose, relaxed grip. Stand a little bit sideways so you can turn your head to watch the back cast. Now, we'll just do this kind of follow the leader style. <clears throat> Hold your rod out at arm's length in front of the shoulder. Don't reach high, don't reach low, keep it straight out. Angle the rod up at a high angle, about 45 degrees ahead of the vertical. All we're going to do for the back cast is pull nice and smooth, a relatively slow movement of the arm. When the hand gets even with the ear, you apply the power of the wrist. That's your back cast. To complete the front cast, just reverse it. Come back down the track, nice slow movement of the arm. You get back to the starting point, and you slap it back with your wrist. Good, powerful stroke of the wrist. So it becomes arm, wrist, arm, wrist, arm, wrist. That's really the motion for the basic casting stroke. Now, let's put the rod together, string up the line, and do some real casting. OK, now that you've got your rod strung up, 
lay about 20 feet of line out in front of you, straight in the grass. Get your grip, thumb on top of the cork, loose, relaxed. For now, let's just tuck the line under our hand. Now, all you wanna do is your basic casting stroke, which is pull with the arm. When the hand gets next to the ear, flick it, then reverse it back and forth. Arm, wrist, arm, wrist, arm, wrist. If you have trouble with that and you're tangling, do half strokes. Do half at a time. Let it lay in the grass. Let it lay in the grass. A back cast and a front cast. Finally, you can put it all together, keep the line aerialized. Rod tip in a straight line. Very easy to do the basic stroke. Let me just review the importance of the quick wrist. That's really what it's all about. The way that I taught myself to cast was to practice the basic stroke over and over and really emphasize the quick movement of that wrist. You don't even have to have the butt of the rod or a real rod. You can be sitting around in the evening watching TV. Just take your hand and go through the movements, but just try to speed that wrist to the point where it really snaps out there. I'm sure some of you have tried to throw water out of a water glass. You know how quick you've got to snap it to get that water out. It's the same deal. You've got to have quickness in the wrist to be a good caster. Emphasize that wrist and you're on your way. Practice 15 or 20 minutes a day until you've mastered the basic stroke. Okay, now that you can do the basic casting stroke, let's apply it to the loop control exercise. So we'll work with varying the size, the shape, and direction of our loop. Start out by throwing some tight loops, get the rod tip going in a straight line. Now throw some wide ones, let it go in a big arc. Now aim high, aim straight, aim low. Now separate your loops by more than a straight line. Notice how the loops open. Raise your back cast and watch the tailing loop. Now, spend most of your time practicing the good ones where your rod tip travels in a nice straight line. Always start out your practice sessions with a loop control exercise. To have the versatility you need to cover any fishing situation, I feel strongly you should be able to cast in every plane and handle every angle. It'll look something like this. Just apply your basic stroke and practice sidearm on your casting side. Bring it right on up over your head, all the way to the other side, until you're comfortable with every angle. Then work on your angles of tilt, down, straight ahead, and high. Learn to handle all the angles and planes. Up to this point, we've concentrated on educating your casting arm and wrist. But when you go fishing, You've got to use both hands. So to get you set up for that, learn to hold the line in your left hand. If you have trouble with it, just touch your belt. Hold it firmly. Don't get in the bad habit of letting your left hand saw back and forth. That's wasted motion. Hold it at your belt. Hold it tightly so it doesn't slip. And that'll set you up for what you have to do in the stream. Timing is critical in fly casting. It takes just as much time for the back cast to straighten as it does the front cast. When you get more experience, this will be automatic. But for now, use a visual key. Turn your head, watch that bright colored fly line. And when it's almost straight, not quite, that's your key to come forward. Don't wait till you feel the tug on the line. That's about three minutes and six seconds too late. If you have, still have trouble with it, practice the music. That's the greatest way in the world to get your timing nice and even. Fly casting is definitely a visual improvement sport. I feel strongly that you should develop the ability to see and recognize your mistakes. Only when you're able to identify your mistakes will you be able to make the proper corrections. Here are three important visual checks you can use to critique yourself. First, the rod tip controls all, so you should learn to observe it closely. Make sure it's traveling in a straight line path. This can be difficult when you're casting vertically with a long rod looking up into the sky. So try casting more sidearm and practice tracing straight lines such as roof lines and telephone wires with your rod tip. Now, let's go to our second visual check. 
Another important visual aspect of casting is what I call the piece of pie. In every casting stroke, there's a beginning and an ending to the wrist snap. If you start snapping the wrist with a rod in this position and end it there, you form what I call the piece of pie. Snap it there to there, a piece of pie. Now let me show you some variations on the pie and point out the importance to your casting. If your wrist snap moves the rod through no more than 90 degrees, or a quarter of a pie, your loop should be well formed and fairly tight. If your wrist snap takes the rod through half a pie, the loop will be too wide. If you try to bite off a slice of pie that's too small, your loops may tangle. Keep your piece of pie at 90 degrees. Our final visual check is the wrist, and it may be the most important one because it controls all. You want to keep it in a flat plane, working straight ahead and straight back. If your palm were open, you'd want to be able to look into your palm at all times. If you twist the rod and the knuckles show up to the rear and your palm is forward, that's bad because it twists your rod tip out of a straight line and opens your loop. Keep everything in a nice flat plane. Straight ahead, straight back. So far I've been emphasizing the visual aspect of casting, where you learn to watch your fly line so you can see your mistakes to make corrections. There's another important factor. I call it the noise factor. A lot of you will go out and start casting with way too much effort, just working much too hard to put that little bit of line out. Relax, rely on timing and technique. You shouldn't make any noise when you cast properly. Very little effort is required. It's basically timing and technique. That's what it's all about. The most important physical skill required to be a really good caster is an educated wrist. A wrist that's not only super quick and smooth, but that's been programmed to transfer energy in a straight line. With this type of well-trained wrist, you can vary the size, shape, and direction of the loop on command. 30 minutes of practice a day for two weeks should easily bring you to this skill level. Here's a great exercise for tightening your loop. Hang a hula hoop at eye level and out about 20 to 25 feet away and try to cast your loop through it. You'll have to quicken your wrist to make it happen. Education of the wrist never stops. If you're having any problems at this point, Go back and review everything we've done so far, especially the basic casting stroke. It's imperative that you master it before you go any further. It's the primary physical skill necessary to become a really good fly caster. Your ability to perform the basic casting stroke automatically and instinctively will allow you to quickly learn all of the exciting presentation cast and techniques that are coming up next. Up to this point, you've learned about the straight line principle, loop control, and the basic casting stroke. Now I'm going to show you an extremely important cast that will make it easy for you to put your fly exactly where you want it. It's called the straight line cast. The straight line cast combines everything you've learned up to now and is the basic building block of all the casts. So far, most of your practice time has been spent throwing loops back and forth in the air in a continuous motion without letting the line hit the ground. You've been using this technique, which is called false casting, to practice loop control. Remember, the key is to keep the loops tight, forcing the energy in a straight line directly to the target. False casting is part of our straight line cast. 
Now I'm going to show you how to present or deliver your line so it lays out perfectly straight on the water. This is your first presentation cast. The straight line cast is what I call a low profile cast. You try to make your front loop roll out right over the water, it has a good chance of staying straight. If you aim too high, there's no way in the world it's going to get down to the water and be straight. Even if you throw a really tight loop like this, it'll sail up like an airplane wing and fall back. Now, if you aim too low and crash it down, it won't straighten either. So there's a magical angle where you aim just below the horizon. You throw, you lower the rod, you get a nice soft presentation. The line lays out nice and straight. It's sort of eye-hand coordination. You look at the target, you drive it home. Again, a good straight line cast is thrown right over the water. You throw, you give a little at the end, and it'll, it'll lay out there nice and straight. Now, let's put it all together in slow motion. I'll show you the entire cast and break it down. Here's the pickup, the back cast, the false cast, and the delivery cast. The straight line cast is the basic cast for fishing dry flies upstream. It is also used for fishing most wet flies in streams and in still water. The key to this cast, as usual, is the wrist, which must be trained for quickness and control. This is the important cast that all others evolve from, so practice hard and be sure you learn it well. Now let's go further and learn the pickup and laydown cast. It's an important version of the straight line cast where only one back cast is made. Okay, the pickup and laydown cast is especially important to the stream fishermen where time is really money. You want your fly out there floating effectively as many seconds as possible during the day. And if you're continually false casting, that fly can't be floating effectively. So in the pick up and lay down cast, we make just one back cast and put it right back down to the water. And it looks something like this. Now, the real key to it is getting the line straight before you make the back cast. If you hold a high rod tip, the line is not straight, it's got a bow in it. So get the rod down right in the water, extend your arm a little bit, cock your wrist forward, have your thumb parallel to the water, lift your arm, flick your thumb straight up, and drive it back down. It's what I call the thumbs up exercise. When you make the back cast, your thumb should be straight up. Come back down. Work on the pickup and delivery, and you'll have a really important stream cast. Okay, now that I've shown you the basic straight line cast and the pickup and lay down cast, let me show you how to change direction both with false casting and without. When you're out here in a stream situation and you're casting cross stream, normally we throw upstream at 45 degrees, let the fly slide down, maybe 90 degrees. To get back to that original target, you've got to come around slowly or you're going to tangle. So come up with your false cast and just go about 30 degrees at a time till you're back to the target. Now let me do it towards you so you see what it really looks like. If I want to change direction 90 degrees, come up, Falls cast about 30 degrees at a time back to the target. If you want to go the other way, same thing. About three falls cast and you're back to your original target. Now, if you've mastered the pick up and lay down cast, where you just come up and go back to the target, start working with a change of direction with that too. And you can change directions maybe 45 degrees when you get good at it. It's something like this. You come up, drive it over here. Practice changing direction about 45 degrees with a pick up and lay down and add that to your false casting change of direction and you'll have a great system for covering all of the different directions on the stream. To catch fish further out, you have to learn to shoot line. Shooting allows us to range out and cover more water without changing position. Shooting line saves time and is less tiring than letting out small amounts of line at a time. 
Okay, the key to shooting line is to get a nice false cast going back and forth, much like your loop control exercise where you were throwing tight loops front and back. Apply your basic casting stroke with a nice quick wrist, tight loop, all your energy flowing to the target, and when you apply the wrist snap on the front cast right there, at that precise second is when you let go of the line with your line hand and you'll get a nice shoot out to the target. Okay, let me strip this line back in here. This is a method, of course, of bringing the line in, and we'll cover this in more detail later on. Now, what I showed you a second ago was to let go of the line totally for the shoot. Don't do that after the first little bit of practice. When you go fishing, you never let go of your line, so learn to let it slide through the thumb and index finger, and you have control of it. When you're out in a stream, you don't want to let go of the line. Get your tight loop going, shoot it through the fingers, and you have control. Practice your tight loops going back and forth and get your shooting down. And you'll be able to get out in your favorite water, range out and catch a lot more fish. Work in your shooting. Okay, let me show you the major problem that most people have with their shooting. I see this all the time. People start out falls casting with a beautiful loop. They've got the basic stroke down really nice. The rod tip travels a straight line. The energy's flowing to the target. Everything just great with a false cast, but unfortunately, the fish doesn't really care about the false cast. He just wants to fly, right? So anyway, here's what happens. They get a nice tight loop going, and on the final delivery cast, which is the only one that counts, they drop the rod too far, totally changing their technique. So what's the correction? Number one, false cast lower, right over the water, right to the target, and there's no room to change your technique. You're already there, and you don't spook fish either. Throw it low, it'll go out. Don't start out with that high false cast and suddenly drop the rod too far in the delivery. It'll never go anywhere. Stay low and tight, and you'll get a good shoot out to that old trap. Okay, now I'm going to take you to the practice field and show you some really dynamite exercises that'll improve your shooting. Okay, to improve your shooting, there are three basic exercises that'll really help you to shoot better. One is the long shoot, the other one is the short shoot, and the other one is the back shoot. Now I'm going to show you what they are right now. First of all, let's get into the long shoot. A lot of you will say you only fish a very small trout stream, or why do you need to learn how to shoot very far? Well, if you learn how to shoot 80 feet in the grass, that little short 10-foot cast on the stream will be a piece of cake. Shooting magnifies your error, so work on it. Here's what you want to do. Get a nice tight loop going back and forth, quicken the wrist, and just let it go. Don't change your technique and get a nice long shoot. Let me do that again. Each day you go out to practice, put a little more line in the air, snap your wrist a little faster, stop that rod up nice and high to keep the loop tight, just let it go and slowly lower your rod. Practice that a little bit every day for a couple of weeks and you'll really improve your shootability. It'll help you in your fishing. The second shooting exercise is what I call the short shoot. And I think it's even more difficult to do than the long shoot. With a long shoot, you have all of this massive line out there automatically loading your rod. With a short shoot, you start out with just one rod length of line. The thing that's going to make that rod bend is your microsecond wrist. This exercise also simulates fishing. How often are you out there with a tight back cast room and you've got to make a good long cast out to that fish? Okay, here's the way it works. Lay out one rod length of line, no more. Make a high hard back cast, come down and really pop that wrist to shoot that short line out. Strip it in even a little further, up, down, really hit it with that microsecond wrist so you can learn to double the length of your line. That'll really help you in a fishing situation. The final shooting exercise is what I call shooting to the rear. It's fact that a good back cast almost ensures a good front cast. So to help you improve that back cast, let's learn to shoot it. If you can shoot this much line forward on the front cast, the back cast should be able to shoot just as far. So here's the way you practice shooting to the rear. Get your false cast going and just let it go. Lower the rod till you get a nice shoot. Let me do that again. 
Get your false cast going back and forth with a nice tight loop. When you're ready to shoot, just let it go, and it should shoot back there just as well as your front cast shot out. Remember, a good dynamic tight loop back cast almost ensures a good front cast. Work on that exer exercise, it'll greatly improve your technique. Now you should be able to cover more water with less effort. Again, the wrist is a key factor in developing the skill of shooting line. Now that you've learned your first fishing cast, the straight line cast, and how to shoot for more distance, you're almost ready to go to your favorite water. But there's still one ingredient missing. It's what I call the control system. It's my system of controlling the line on the water after the cast is made. Without line control, you'll never be a skillful fly fisherman. You will not have the ability to take in slack, set hooks, and make proper pickups. It greatly increases your fishing time by giving you longer drag-free floats. OK, there are three basic steps to line control. First of all, I'll tell you what they are, and then I'll demonstrate them. The first step is to put the line over the finger as soon as the cast is made. The second one is to lower the rod tip to the water. And the third one is to follow the flow with the rod tip at the speed of the flow. OK? Now, here's the way it works. Make the cast, line over the finger, lower the rod, and follow the drifting line. Let me do that again. Watch the hands closely. Notice how quick I get the line over the index finger, even before the fly's in the water. Then I lower the rod, and I go with the flow. I get a nice drag-free float, and I'm in a good position. Now let me tell you why you should do those three things. The first thing is to get the line over the finger. If you don't put the line over your finger, you really have no way to control the slack in your system. You can't take it in, you can't let it out. With the line over the finger, you can strip line in, or you can let line out. If you don't put it over the finger, you have no control. The second step is to lower the rod. If you fish with a high rod, you very quickly put drag in the fly, and over and above that, you're in a bad position for setting hooks, and you're in a bad position for making a cast. Your rod's up too far. So by lowering the rod, you're in a better position. If you have to set a hook, you can do it. If you have to make a cast, you're in great shape. Now, the reason for following the current with your rod tip at the speed of the current is so you get a longer drag-free float. Even though you put the line over your finger and lower the rod, if you don't follow along at the speed of the current, you get drag right away. But after you get the rod down, if you go with the flow at the speed of the current, like I'm doing now, I'm going downstream with the rod tip, speed of the current, I'm getting a nice drag-free float. So you ought to work in this control system. Be sure that you put the line over the finger, lower the rod, and follow the drifting line. This will put you in control of any situation. Combining the straight line cast and shooting with the control system gives us a basic presentation technique. With it, you can go to your favorite water and catch fish. Come on, baby. Come on now. Try another straight liner. Drop it in nice and light. Oh, boy, one looked at it. Said, no thanks. Here we go. Hey, not too big. Fair fish, though. Whoa, now that fish just came off a nice, simple, straight line cast, little control system. I don't know if he's going to have that red stripe or not. Nope, no brownie. Old brownie. Now nah, he's shaking his head like a brown. Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. Come on. Shake it again. Oh, they like to dig. Oh, he's really digging now. Come on. Oh, boy. Can't get that head up. He wants to go home. Come on, come to your daddy. Come on, come on, come on, up. Oh, not a bad fish, not a bad fish. Okay. Let's bring water steam in here in a minute. 
on, get that head out. Boy, he not, knows nothing but standing on his head. Come on, guy, you're gonna be released. Hmm. All right, now maybe, now maybe. Boy, he took that fly. Not so long, but he sure is heavy. Whew, gee, my knee. Must be two and a half inches across. Not a bad brownie, not a bad one. I've never bet, met one I didn't like. Uh, ah, I lucked out there. Okay. Okay, now you can go home, fella. See ya, have fun. Now that you've mastered the basic straight line cast, let's go a step further. The slack line cast, which I'll show you next, is just as important to the stream fisherman as a straight line cast is to the stillwater fisherman. When you fish across stream currents of varying speeds, you need to present your fly in a natural manner, which means floating at the same speed as the current in which the fly is drifting. This is called a drag-free float. The slack line cast puts slack between you and the fly. So while the currents are playing out the slack, your fly is floating naturally providing a longer drag-free float than you get with a straight line cast. The basic slack line cast is based on the principle of using more line than you need to get to the target. You take that excess line and you distribute it in a series of sine waves between you and your target. And the object is to buy time. As those sine waves straighten out, your fly is floating drag-free. Now let me show you how to throw this cast. You take a wide loop and you aim it high above the horizon. You throw, you immediately drop the rod and you get nice sine waves puddling out to the target. You throw a wide loop high, you drop the rod. You throw high, you drop the rod. Now if you throw high and you don't drop the rod, look what happens, you pull all the slack out. So remember to get the rod down at the end of the cast. Now let me tell you why you throw the high loop. Slack line has to be formed in the air, so that front cast has to be elevated over the horizon to give the serpentines time to form. Secondly, you throw a wide loop so you don't tangle. If you remember from our loop control exercise, that when you have a front loop and a back loop separated by less than 180 degrees, you throw the tailing loop. So if you throw that loop wide enough, it's not gonna tangle. So just to review, here's your basic slack line cast. A wide loop thrown high, you drop the rod, and it puddles to the target. Dynamite cast for giving you a nice drag-free float in most any situation. You should learn to throw varying amounts of slack line, depending on the stream situation. Now, when we fish basically upstream, you don't really need a lot of slack, just a few little curly cues. But as you come across more and more currents and get on down to the downstream quadrant, then you need more and more slack. So, when you're fishing upstream, you don't have to throw the loop too high, just a little bit over the water, easy power, just drop the rod, and you get a nice little bit of slack line. Apply your control system. Let's throw another one. Throw it out, a little bit of slack. And you can fish the upstream waters very nicely. Now, as you come around and fish more downstream, you've got to throw more and more slack. So that means throw your loop higher and get your rod down quicker. So you throw high, you get the rod down, and you get a ton of slack. You need all that time to allow that fly to flow drag free. So you need more and more slack as your fly goes below your body position. So work on varying amounts of slack line depending on the angle you're fishing in the stream. Let's see, are we home, are we home, is anybody home? Are you home or no? Are you home? Is you home? Come on. Do, 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 do. Good slack line cast. 
control system. There's a little brownie, there's a little brownie. Oh, better brownie than I thought. Get the line out from around my neck, we'll be all set. Nice golden yellow. Ooh. Finger. Stop rising there. Now, get your head up, get your head up. Get your head up. Oh. Come on, Brownie. Come on, Brownie. Man, I'll take a rainy day anytime for good fishing. Well, it's invariably after a lot of sunshine. In hot weather. Come on with a rainy day and it changes your whole attitude. What a hatch. What a hatch. Mm, pretty fish. Pretty fish. Okay. Okay, come on, Brownie. Come on. Gonna let you loose. Gonna let you loose. There we go. Catch up with you. Okay. How did you do that fly? Oh, it's right inside the upper lip. Yeah. Okay. Pretty fish. Love it. Okay, I've saved the toughest problem to last. For this demo, I'm going to go back to the yarn rod because you can see what I'm doing better. It's more graphic. What I'm going to talk about is the tailing loop, the loop that closes and sometimes tangles your line and leader. The one that looks something like this. The one where that tip of the line comes through low, you get your tangles. What you'd rather throw is a better loop that looks something like that. It's more open. That won't tangle. This one will. The reason you throw the tailing loop is because you got your rod back too far when you start your power stroke. You're probably using a piece of pie that's about like that. Let's try that. Yep, that threw a tailing loop. But look what happens when I push the pie further ahead. It opens the loop. So a good exercise to learn to get rid of your tailing loops is to drag the rod tip up past vertical before you hit your power stroke on both the front cast and the back cast. That'll teach you to hold off longer Get your rod in the right position before you apply the power stroke. Then you can back off in that exercise and get it right. You won't throw those tailing, tangling loops anymore. Work on it. It's worth it. In this tape, I've shown you my system of fly casting, a system that will give you the versatility to fish any type of water, and a system I think you'll find very easy to learn. We started with the visual aspect of casting. You must be able to see your mistakes if you're going to make corrections. Then, in Casting Basics, we discovered the importance of straight line energy transfer. The straighter you make your rod tip travel, the more energy flows to the target. Then, after learning what the loop is and what its characteristics are, I taught you the basic casting stroke, which gave you the ability to physically control the size, shape, and direction of the loop. We then combine the straight line principle with a basic casting stroke to learn the all-important straight line cast, which is the foundation of all the presentation cast. To catch fish at greater distances, I taught you how to shoot line. Then, we added the control system, which gives us a method of controlling the line on the water after the cast is made. Finally, I showed you the slack line cast, which gives you the ability to present your fly across currents in a natural manner. By now, I'm sure you realize the key to good casting is the educated wrist. A wrist that is micro quick, super smooth, and a wrist that precisely controls the movement of the rod tip. If you've enjoyed what we've done so far, you won't believe what's coming next in my advanced fly casting tape. In advanced casting, you'll learn how to make the transition from just being a caster to a real fly fisherman, capable of fishing the difficult places that others can't.
It's excitement you're after. Come fishing with the experts from 3M Scientific Anglers and learn ways to catch more and bigger trout on the fly. You'll learn where to find trout in a stream and ways to present the right fly with the perfect cast so you can catch the most elusive trout during hatch and non-hatch situations. Plus, there's steelheading for 20-pound rainbows or going for the ultimate saltwater challenge. Let 3M Scientific Anglers bring home the excitement while you learn a lifetime of mastery techniques that will help you become the best fly fisherman you can be. There's no other sport like fly fishing. It can truly give you a lifetime of discovery and enjoyment. Whether you fish your own favorite stream or travel the world with your fly rod, there's no end to what you'll learn. To help speed you along your path of discovery, Scientific Anglers from 3M has recruited some of the world's best fly fishermen to produce a complete learning system of videotape programs. Unlike simple how-to videos, the Scientific Angler's Mastery Series shows you more than just tips. It gives you an easy-to-learn formula for success to truly help you become a master angler. There are programs designed to give you a strong foundation of knowledge and skill. At the next level, the Mastery System helps you integrate the skills and knowledge into sophisticated fly fishing strategies. And for the expert, there are challenge level programs that offer original and innovative techniques to help you master the most difficult fly fishing situation. Think of it as a learning path towards fly fishing mastery. The tape you just viewed is part of that path. In Doug Swisher's Trout Series, Scientific Anglers presents a four part program that features a natural learning progression. First, there's basic fly casting where you learn loop control and the principles of throwing a perfect straight line cast. Then you move on to advanced fly casting, building your skills with more complex casting techniques, including curve and reach cast. Now you're ready for action as Strategies for Selective Trout shows you how to fish a hatch from bottom to top. And you'll almost feel the strike as Doug demonstrates ways to take difficult trout in non-hatch conditions. Finally, in advanced strategies for selective trout, Doug teaches you his most sophisticated methods, including ways to successfully fish the midge, how to unlock the mysteries of masking hatches and special streamer tactics to catch big trout. You'll be part of the action as you look through the eyes of the expert and learn the real whys behind the mastery of fly fishing for trout. While you're improving your streamside skills, you may also want to learn to tie your own flies. Gary Borger shows you a step-by-step -step approach to the basics of fly tying. And Doug Swisher demonstrates how to tie flies to match the hatch and his deadly attractor patterns. If you're hooked on catching the big ones, you've got to see the four-part series on fly fishing for Pacific Steelhead. Lonnie Waller and Jim Teeny will provide you with a complete arsenal of skills so that you can take these giant rainbows, even in the most challenging conditions. But that's not all. Scientific Anglers takes you south to watch world record holder Billy Pate demonstrate his secrets of success for hooking up and landing the ultimate fly fishing game. And if you love fishing, hunting, and other sports, Think of 3M as your total video resource for outdoor adventure. Explosive action. In-depth information. Incredible scenes. 3M Sportsman's Video Collection brings you the world of bass fishing with America's top anglers like Doug Hannon, Ricky Klein, and Al Linder, a comprehensive learning series that'll make you the best bass angler on your lake. You'll be glad you watch these programs when you catch the bass of a lifetime.
gentle beauty of a deep forest glade. The heart-pounding excitement of a trophy buck in rut. Going one-on-one -on -one with North America's most popular big game animal. That's what deer hunting's all about. And nobody brings you more in-depth information than true life action than the 3M Sportsman's video collection. The excitement of calling a bird into your gun. The satisfaction of making a clean shot. And the companionship of a well-trained dog. If you like the challenge of upland game bird and waterfowl hunting, 3M Sportsman's video collection gives you the thrill of being there and the knowledge you need to master the sport.